Streaming services are more popular than ever. And now that we're all stuck at home, it's not hard to see why. Every platform has its own awesome library of movies and TV shows. We've come a really long way since the days of mail and Netflix DVD subscriptions and blockbuster rentals. Remember those? Be kind and rewind. I got carded at the grocery store yesterday. While I was looking for my ID in my wallet, my blockbuster cart actually fell out onto the counter. The guy started laughing and said, "Uh, never mind, I don't need to see your ID. Today, there are so many streaming services to choose from. You have your famous ones, your favorite ones, maybe like Hulu and Amazon Prime and HBO. But we have so many new platforms just popping up left and right. Disney+, Apple TV+, Apple TV, Canopy, Peacock, and more. Bottom line, we are totally spoiled for choice. At least, that's how I felt before quarantine. Let me tell you, before we all started staying home, my list of shows that I wanted to watch, well, it was probably a mile long. For the first few months of staying home, I was having the time of my life just breezing through shows I never before had the time to watch. But what happens when you empty your queue? Well, that's when you start with the endless scroll. You know, it's when you open up Netflix. You're going down your Netflix page, trying to find something that will catch your eye. Now, I don't know about you, but when I wrap up an amazing show... I actually feel kind of sad that the adventure's over. It can be hard to find something that measures up. It's kind of funny when you think about it. For all that technology has changed, some things remain the same. When I'm looking through Netflix, trying to find something new to watch, it really takes me back to the days of cable TV. As a little kid, I spent so much time channel surfing. Do you remember this? You'd sit in front of the TV, switching from one network to the next, in search of something good to watch. Look at my baby! They're like, get this crazy man off the streets! but lately I've been drifting aimlessly. TV time with my family used to be us all sitting on the floor or the couch or whatever. Because I was the youngest, I got the opportunity to be the remote control. Yes, mom or dad would say, hey, Kim, put on channel two. So up I would get, change the channel, and just as I sat back down, someone else wanted the volume higher or lower. Yes, those were really fun times. Today we have all kinds of remotes and a new kind of remote to find something you might want to watch. You know how on Netflix and other platforms you get suggested shows? There's a little box that'll say, if you like this show, here's another one you might like. Sometimes the suggestions are right on the mark, but other times, not so much. Today I'm going to introduce you to a great resource. It's called Real Good, as in R-E-E-L Good. It's like Google for what's streaming. It has every TV show and movie available online. That's right, every single one. It is truly one of the most powerful search engines you could possibly find for streaming services. Basically, it combines all the platforms you subscribe to. Think Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, Disney+, Apple+, Apple TV, HBO Max, Peacock, and more, and lets you watch them all in one place. Yes, it's convenient, but the best thing is it collects data on the shows you watch across all the platforms, so it can pinpoint exactly what you like about each show and then give you personally curated suggestions. So say goodbye to the endless scroll. You'll never again have to worry about what to watch next. In this podcast, we're going to go over the top five shows you've probably watched. We're going to sit down with Real Good's creative strategist, Nick Floyd. Together, he and I are going to break down exactly what you should watch next. We're also going to tell you about the surprising way that COVID's impacted the television industry. You're going to learn so much in this episode. A lot of fun things, too. What shows are people watching? What are the top most watched shows of all time? and how life is going to change once we don't have to stay home all the time. This is a great episode. We have a lot of terrific stuff coming your way. So stay right where you are, because the show is about to start. So welcome back to Tech You Should Know. This is a great episode about all entertainment. Wondering what to watch next? By the time we're done, that problem is going to be a thing of the past. So Nick, let's jump right into it. I feel like nowadays it's so common for people to turn on the TV with a specific show or movie in mind. 
It normally happens around the holidays. You know that you want a specific movie. You look it up on HBO, on Netflix, on Amazon. It's not there. I know I've done it before. Sometimes you just go, oh, forget it. I'm just not going to watch it. That endless scroll is a real problem, isn't it? <laughs> it's the thing. It's, it's become a stamina contest, especially with Netflix. I think putting an end to the endless scroll is, is such an important thing that if you need something to watch, that's where hopefully I can come in and say, well, here's a, a curated row of content that is trending and that hopefully you'll be interested in, in checking out and then saying, here's 50 things that you can watch. Hopefully we're ending that turn on Netflix scroll for an hour and then realize you're tired and, and then you throw, you know, friends or Rick and Morty on and, and say, I've called it a night of background noise. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Absolutely. And I bet people are dealing with this more now than ever. After all, we have been seeing this explosive growth in streaming times now that everyone's, well, spending so much time inside. You know, with people ingesting more content than ever before with, with the way that 2020 has gone and, and not being able to go to the movies, that was everyone's escape. They're trying to figure out if I'm in the mood to watch Jurassic Park, where can I find, where is it streaming? I need to know right now, where, where is it streaming? Because if it's not on Netflix, are people making the extra step to search Hulu and Prime and Peacock and all, you know, or HBO Max, all these different services. So, you know, we're able to, to offer them a guide to say, hey, just type in what you want to watch and, and we'll show you exactly where it's streaming. And, and if it's not streaming, where the cheapest place is to rent or buy it. Let me get your opinion on this. According to Fox Business, the average American spends around eight hours a day streaming shows. Wow. When I saw that number, I was shocked. What do you think? Eight hours is, it's one of those things where you look at it and you say, well, does this make sense? And logically, I think that with people being home, I think they are, you know, they might have something playing in the background while they're, while they're working from home and in between calls and in between meetings and, and all of that. And then at nighttime, I think it's, you know, instead of going out or, or going to a restaurant, you're cooking at home. It's taking you half an hour, 40 minutes. Then you have two extra hours to watch TV. And I mean, that number is <laughs> realistic, honestly. Yeah, hey, that makes sense. It's not like you're going to sit down for eight hours straight. Could you imagine how much your back would hurt from sitting that long? Oh, my gosh. But, you know, this new normal we find ourselves is kind of fascinating. It's changing so much, including how we are viewing our television and our streaming services and our movies and TV shows. Give me your opinion on that, Nick. How has COVID impacted streaming? You know, it's so interesting. I think, I mean, I think there was, a, a situation created with being in quarantine where I kind of got to see what people want to watch. I think when everyone was out and, and, and busy and going to concerts and movies and all these different things and places, it was really hard to kind of gauge, like, what do people want to see? Do we, do, do we need more TV? Do we need more movies? And what types of genres do we want to present to these people? And I think that, that we've seen a lot of really interesting trends. I think people are revisiting things that they didn't watch watch before. Well, that makes sense. Real Good can give better recommendation because it has a heck of a lot more data. I mean, you can see exactly what people are looking up. You're learning more about which types of content people want to watch. Now, tell me about some of the trends you're seeing. You know, Netflix has is, is really been sort of the, the home base. It's been the universal language of streaming, right? So it, it's talking to, to folks and you can, I can recommend any stranger and say, hey, this show on Netflix or hey, this movie's on Netflix. Even if you're a stranger, I assume you have Netflix, but I think we're seeing more people explore different avenues of streaming than ever. So it sounds like people are becoming more open to trying new things, right? People are, are open to trying more things. It's becoming more common and easy to recommend things because like Shudder is a great example. Yeah, that's a good one. For anyone who hasn't heard of it, Shudder is a service devoted to scary movies. I bet a ton of people will be using it on Halloween. And I know Halloween's coming up, but that is one where I found myself personally recommending some stuff to friends that are on Shudder and, and them having Shudder. So I think there's more bread from Netflix. We're seeing these other services grow and become more of a household name, a universal service that kind of everyone has. So it appears as if we're seeing a decrease in brand loyalty to Netflix. People are broadening their horizons, trying new things, right? I think so. I think I think it's I think the power of streaming right now is just such a such a beautiful thing and I think there's so many unique stories that are being told on each platform and and people really really want that. And and the beauty of it is that you can deliver content. I mean, you can surprise people with movies. It 
completely come out of nowhere and you can drop them on your service. And, and we're seeing more and more of that, not just on Netflix, but across the board. That makes sense. I've tried to watch so many new shows, but a lot of them I just can't get into. So, Nick, from what you're saying, it sounds like streaming services are seeing a huge boost in their numbers, which would absolutely make sense because we are in the middle of this pandemic. So is it a great time for streaming services? Absolutely, especially just with the current state of of movie theaters. Streaming services are the next line of defense besides premium video on demand where these movies can, can, they have a home and they have an audience. And, you know, studios can still see a return on those on those films. So, you know, it's great. It's great that the, the market is, is, is becoming, I think, more saturated with stuff and more people using services that they're opening themselves up to just a plethora of TV and movies and stuff maybe they haven't seen before or maybe wouldn't have watched a year ago, but now are wide open to it. And that's a really good point, because this year everyone's trying new things. Anything to distract yourself from being bored. I have a Peloton bike, and I am on that bike, honest to gosh, at least 27, 28 days a month because I just need to have 30 minutes to myself where nobody bothers me. Sometimes it's even an hour, maybe even a longer ride that I go on. And I want to talk about some of the new shows, Nick, because not everybody can sit on a Peloton bike for an hour. It seems like we've got some new content coming out left and right. For example, Lovecraft Country and Raised by Wolves. Man, that show has such an intense trailer. Go now. Start over. Initiating trimester one. These children are the future of humanity. I wonder, now that we're all home, are the newer shows seeing greater numbers than those that came out before the lockdown? I guess you could say we're a captive audience. Since people are less likely to have to go out, they're probably at home on the nights shows are premiering. Are newer shows getting higher views than shows that came out before the pandemic? That would seem like it would make sense. Uh, On our end, I'm not 100% sure, but just overall in terms of seeing the trends and and what that looks like on on my end of things. I mean, I do, you know, you're seeing, I know Raised by Wolves sort of snuck under the radar, and that was one that, that came out and no one was really talking about jumping on right away. And then as the show continued, uh, I think it was just sitting down binging and it ending strong and, and having the attention that, that I guess they were hoping it would have. But I think right now everyone is so caught up in, in what's happening around them that when they would go to the movies or they turn on the TV or they you know see a billboard, they were being kind of served and advertised the show. But the only type of marketing that, that folks are seeing now are on social media, Instagram, YouTube. And I think some people are just missing when, when things come out and say, oh, I forgot that came out this week. Yeah, you're right. You'll see them sort of play catch up and Lovecraft Country. I mean, there was a dip a few episodes into the series and then it sort of picked up steam in the last kind of half of the season. I mean, that show was very, very well regarded and, and talked about and ended on a note that had a lot of people kind of excited and, and happy that they tuned in. Yeah, the best way to end a season is to leave your viewers just wanting more. You got to give them a hint of the awesome things to come. Speaking of which, later this episode, I'm going to get Nick's expert opinion on how to recommend shows. We're going to break down five of the biggest shows right now, and we're going to tell you what people are searching the most for. And by the time we're done, you're going to learn exactly what you should watch next, and you'll be so happy. Welcome back to Tech You Should Know. Today we're hanging out with Nick Floyd, the content strategist at Real Good. He spends his days recommending shows to people. And I got to say, Nick, it sounds like a great gig to talk about when you go to parties or you meet new people. One of the first questions you ask is, so what do you do for the living? A lot of times you get like the normal answers like oh, financial analyst, I'm in sales and so on. It can be hard to spark an interesting conversation just based on a job title alone. But Your job sounds really interesting. I bet it is a great conversation starter, isn't it, Nick? It is 
It is so much fun. It all sort of came about in lockdown and stuff like that because I originally discovered Real Good and, and it sort of uh, was a lifesaver for me <laughs> uh, in quarantine trying to figure out what's streaming where and how I can find it and, and all this. So it's been a fun conversation to have on the phone and, and things uh, to, to just basically be able to recommend and, and kind of curate stuff for folks, especially who are friends of mine too, who are like, what do I watch? What do I What do? I do? Well, your friends are lucky they have you. And today our listeners are lucky too, because we're going to get your expert opinion on some shows they have just got to watch. Before we dive into specifics, I'm curious, what are some of the most popular shows of all time? What are folks searching for the most? The most searched for shows of all time. Those currently, I mean, what we have that, that, Folks are always searching for. I mean, you have the Game of Thrones, you have Modern Family, uh, Chernobyl. I think with HBO Max, we're seeing a lot of a lot of that specific content and and stuff that maybe people have missed who didn't have the opportunity to have HBO Go or HBO Now. Um, with HBO Max sort of taking on multiple brands, having the the Rick and Morty type content, having the DC Universe content, and then having the HBO catalog plus all the movies. Uh, I think we're seeing a boost in a lot of those older shows. I mean, Westworld, Chernobyl, and Game of Thrones have always been up there. Those are some great shows. Man, Chernobyl was intense. The trailer alone gave me chills. All of the good we did, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that to them, justice was done. See, a just world is a sane world. There was nothing sane about Chernobyl. Now, I'm curious about this. Are people watching the same things they always have? Or are you seeing a shift in searches? Are people looking up specific genres? For example, maybe people are looking up disaster movies or films about pandemics. So, Nick, tell me, what are the top shows that people are watching right now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've really seen... Specific things. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of people have been watching The Boys on Prime Video, which has been which has been a huge um, a huge hit, as well as the Umbrella Academy on Netflix, which is you know that has seen a lot of uh, attention, a lot of numbers. The Walking Dead's numbers have been back up with the show kind of being in this hiatus, waiting for the final episode to air a couple weeks ago. Um, and, you know, Netflix has had some home runs with The Old Guard. That one was huge. Enola Holmes has done incredibly well. Okay, so those are some of the biggest shows. What about movies? A lot of these movies with powerhouse performers, Devil All the Time, wasn't the biggest movie, but it was one that everyone was watching because you have Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson and these big names that people miss seeing on the big screen. You know, you have Spider-Man and the new Batman who are in this movie together on Netflix. People are drawn to those same old familiar faces, huh? People are taking more chances on the, the, this content, and those are some of the biggest things that we've seen over the past couple months. So, Nick, I'm curious. What are people looking at more, new shows or old shows? I'm wondering if people are returning to old favorites like Office or Friends. I'm wondering if that old familiar comfort plays a role in that. Shed some light on that. Absolutely. I do think, I mean, we're seeing two, two things. I think we are seeing folks who are, who are returning who, or, or, or catching up on the Parks and Rec, uh, the Rick and Morty, especially with Peacock, uh, you know, with The Office. But we're also seeing things like when Bill and Ted Face the Music came out, people were you know, seeking out Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure uh, and, and trying to watch the original movie because this was on their plate. It was right in front of them and they could say, oh, here's a new movie, but I haven't seen the other two. And so they're digging for those. So in all your research and data tracking, have you found anything that surprises you? There have been a few surprises, a few movies that have just kind of popped up that, that show up in our uh, in our charts that are so interesting and, and always have me scratch my head. Like, how did that get, you know, how did that wind up on the chart? That's so interesting. Oh, really? Tell me more. Any shows or movies in particular? A couple of weeks ago in September, I mean, we saw Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind break the top 20. And when you see movies like that, where there's really no specific trend, there's no, there's nothing really trending on social media. There's nothing. It's just a movie that sort of tops that chart. I mean, you think of all the content that's that's available, and you see a movie like, you know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, or you see a movie uh, like The Peanut Butter Falcon, which was recently on Prime Video, but 
uh, in one of my favorite movies from last year, that movie sort of break the top 20 is so fascinating because there, there is, we're seeing that discovery is happening and that people maybe are realizing like, oh, I missed something. I'm going to go back and watch it. And it's happening not just with a small bundle of people, but enough people to reflect the the numbers that we're seeing overall in our top 10s and, and top 20s. Wow. I wonder what was the draw of those movies. I mean, they're so different. I mean, Eternal Sunshine is artistic and ethereal. It's like watching a dream on screen. There's an emotional core to each of our memories. And when you eradicate that core, it starts its degradation process. By the time you wake up in the morning, all the memories were targeted with them. Peanut Butter Falcon isn't anything like Eternal Sunshine. It's much more lighthearted and sweet. Yeah, and a, a fantastic feel-good movie that I feel everyone should be watching right now. Um, but yeah, seeing it climb the charts, it's great, especially for this tiny little movie that, that really deserved the, some attention last year. You know what? Maybe that's the reason why so many people are streaming it. Nowadays, we... I'll need a feel-good movie because, gosh, when you turn on the news, you look on the web or social media, everything's just like frown town. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, now I want to move this episode along. I want to get into the fun part. Show recommendations. I can't wait to dive into some of the shows our listeners need to watch right now. And here we're going to talk about five great popular shows you've probably watched. We're going to go through them one by one, and Nick's going to tell you, hey, if you watch this... Here's what you've got to see next. But before we do all that, Nick, what are your personal top five shows? Oh, my personal top five shows. That's a scary thing. My, my go-to, my, my, my go-to always, uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. It's, high, it's very underrated, but I have hope that it is going to pick up steam. It's a, a little show called Mr. Robot. Um, very, very... Uh, heavy in tech, very timely to what's happening in the world right now, but it's it's officially all on Amazon Prime now. So that's the the the, the nerd inside of me is so excited that I think people are going to find it and they're going to lose their mind over how wild this show is. So that's always been number one for me. Um, I Ted Lasso is another one that I've fallen in love with. It's super recent, but I adore it. Uh, Ozark is. Uh, another fantastic one. Uh, I've always been a fan of the show Entourage on HBO. I know that's a, a little dated, but it's always been a fun one and, and easy to turn on. And then Rick and Morty, I'm, I can't lie. I love it so much. <laughs> Those are some great ones. It's always fun to ask people about their favorite shows. I mean, let me tell you about mine. I love The Handmaid's Tale. I love The Crown. My husband's watching America right now. I just really couldn't get into that. And I'm really big on documentaries. If it's a true story, you can just count me in. But I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward to this chat with you. Because coming up, I'm going to throw some of the biggest shows of all time at Nick. These are titles I'm sure you've watched before. I mean, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are Breaking Bad fans. It's just so popular. We're also going to be talking about Shit's Creek. Oh. Gosh, I loved Schitt's Creek. It was like, it is the funniest show of all time. The Walking Dead's great too. Nick and I are going to go through each show and you're going to get his personal recommendations for what you've got to watch next. This is a rare opportunity to hear from a TV expert. And so if you're a fan of a big name show like Seinfeld, Game of Thrones, or Stranger Things, you are going to love this. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss our awesome finale. Welcome back, folks. We're now at a part I've been really looking forward to. I can't wait to share it with you. I just love talking about amazing TV. And Nick, you're the perfect person to chat with. So let's talk about some of the most beloved TV shows people watch. Let's start with Seinfeld, since hearing the theme song always gets me in a great mood. Say someone has just binged the whole show. They've watched every single episode. And now they're looking for something that's just as well-written and just funny. What should they watch next? I mean, my immediate go-to is Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee on Netflix. Jerry Seinfeld is driving around interviewing some incredible talent. That's always my go-to. And uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm and Veep on HBO Max as well, because you have some alums who, who are, have their own shows. 
Oh, Curb Your Enthusiasm is a great one. Larry Davis writes for both shows, so you know you're getting the same wit. Not to mention the theme song. You gotta love it. What if someone's already watched it? What else could Seinfeld fans check out? Schitt's Creek, I think, is also a, a fantastic kind of play on on the Seinfeld sit, sitcom sort of show. So that's the immediate go-to that, that doesn't feature alums from Seinfeld. It's just sort of its own show that, that I think will, will please Seinfeld fans. That's a good one. Schitt's Creek just won the 2020 Emmy Award for Outstanding Comedy Series. If you want to laugh... Watch Schitt's Creek, and that's S-C-H-I-T-T-S Creek. Tell me more, Nick. What makes such a good show? There's just something about, I think a lot of shows do have a heartwarming sentiment. I think those those comedy shows, I mean, we've been seeing it since shows that, that date back, I mean, to Cheers. There's always that, that heartwarming feeling you get when you watch these shows, but with Schitt's Creek, the, the balance of family and, and just the heartwarming nature of it all and just how funny it is really uh it's just appealing to so many especially in, in the time that we're currently in where you just you just want to feel good watching something and you want to have some laughs and and uh, follow some quirky characters along the way oh yeah it's got a lot of funny scenes i need that bed why because i need it why because if someone were to break in here in the middle of the night wanting to murder us they would attack this bed first so i need this bed so you're saying that you want me to get murdered first in front of you? And then what would you do? Would you just run away and leave me to bleed out on the floor? Uh, sort of. That was the plan. Yeah. So let's say someone follows your advice, Nick. They watch Seinfeld. They wrap up Shit's Creek. What should they watch next? Oh, that's tricky. I mean, I would I would easily uh, kind of the, the next thing, especially if you went from Seinfeld and, and if you did love Shit's Creek, the, the, the first immediate pivot would be uh, Ted Lasso on Apple TV+. Plus. That is, I have not, it just gives you the warm and fuzzies and Apple TV plus is a service that I know a lot of people aren't uh, signed up to. I think that it is a service that's growing, but this is a show that is 100% worth the subscription, especially if you followed in the, the, the path of Seinfeld to Schitt's Creek and you need something. What is that something? That something is Ted Lasso on Apple TV plus. If you haven't heard of Ted Lasso, it's a show all about soccer, or since it takes place in the UK, they call it football. They're going to murder you. This is a bit of news from the other side of the Atlantic. AFC Richmond announced the hiring of their new manager, American football coach Ted Lasso. You're an American who's now in charge of a football club, despite possessing very little knowledge of the game. Oh, you I'm mentioned those warm and fuzzy feelings. Let's pivot to something that's well, kind of opposite, Game of Thrones. You can't exactly say Game of Thrones and get all those warm and fuzzies, right? Oh, yes. Let's say someone just finished season eight. What direction should they head to next? I mean, you're looking, if, if you're looking on Netflix, you have The Last Kingdom, uh, which is a, a fantastic fantasy show. It's a little bit more grounded in reality, but it has a lot of the politics, a lot of the drama. And uh, it's beautifully shot. So that's on Netflix. You have The Witcher with Henry Cavill, which is leans heavily in the, the, the really high fantasy type stuff. So if you love Game of Thrones for the dragons and the, the demon creatures and all, and the, and the troll, the, the, the giants, then The Witcher is going to be the thing for you. Any others? Uh, but if you really are leaning into The Last Kingdom and you just want more drama, uh, the next immediate thing is Vikings, which is on Hulu and Prime. Fantastic show that that I highly recommend. And then as far as families go, we even have Cursed in the Letter for the King on Netflix. So if you want to introduce your, your tweens, your your teens to, to Game of Thrones, but you really don't want to throw them to the wolves, so to speak, with uh, how intense that show can be, uh, Cursed and Letter for the King are a great place to start um, to, to kind of sit down as a family and watch some some fantasy drama. Those are some great suggestions. I really like how you covered all the bases there. I mean, GOT has a lot of different elements, politics, fantasy, fighting, and ice zombies. So if we've got any fans of the show out there, Nick just threw out some great titles. I hope you're writing these down. Speaking of intense shows, let's get to Breaking Bad. Oh my gosh, that show was wild. 
So if someone's just wrapped up Breaking Bad, what's the next show they should watch? The immediate thing, I mean, being such a fan of Breaking Bad, immediately, if you're not watching Better Call Saul, uh, I know a lot of people were in the first season. It was amazing in the first season. It's, it's just as amazing, if not better, now. And they're bringing characters in from the Breaking Bad world, and it's just such a blast from the past. I, I recommend that immediately. If you don't really want something in the Breaking Bad universe, highly recommend Ozark on Netflix, Narcos on Netflix, and Fargo on Hulu, which is kind of a left field, but has a lot of similar vibes and tones. And, and I think that, that it's worth checking out. I really like crime shows. We've talked about some great shows. Everything we've mentioned so far is pretty unique. So let's pivot to The Walking Dead. This show has some diverse elements. You have drama, the disaster, and survival elements. And of course, there's the science fiction and the horror. I mean, what's scarier than zombies? Let's say someone just wrapped up the show. They're desperate for something similar. They do the endless scroll down Netflix. What show would you suggest to break them out of that fog? What should they put on next that they were going to really like? Yeah, you know, The Walking Dead is such a it's such an interesting thing, because like Breaking Bad, we're, we kind of live in this world where when a show ends, we'll sort of see it continue some somehow. I mean, Breaking Bad, we had Better Call Saul and we had El Camino, the movie about Jesse. So with Walking Dead, you kind of have all this content with Fear the Walking Dead and now with The Walking Dead Worlds Beyond, which is their new show. Yeah, there's a lot of great content in that universe. If you need even more outside of that, there's a fantastic show about a zombie apocalypse called Kingdom on Netflix, which is a really fun and fascinating take on the zombie genre. And Kingdom has a drastically different setting. It takes place in what looks like medieval Korea, so you're getting a fresh take on a classic genre. And then Black Summer, which is also on Netflix, and it kind of, it came, people loved it, and it's getting a season two, but I think more people can still catch on and, and check it out. It's, to, it's totally worth it. But if you if you love the, the Walking Dead world, that universe, that sort of gritty drama that has the horror elements, uh, Kingdom and Black Summer, are definitely, definitely worth checking out. I hope everybody's writing these recommendations down. A new zombie show might be the perfect thing for you. And now, last but not least, Stranger Things. This show is super unique. What should people watch if they want more just like Stranger Things? There's really nothing like it. The next best thing is here's a bunch of movies to watch. So Stranger Things, because it's so influenced by stuff from our past, immediately the first couple things that I would recommend television-wise, if, you, if you're ready for the next binge, Dark on Netflix is another fantastic show that's very much in the vein of Stranger Things, uh, as well as The Umbrella Academy. It, it has the fun, it has some nostalgic little throwbacks and, and, and just this kind of unique nature to it. But outside of those two shows, you start getting into movies where I say, if you love Stranger Things, go back and watch The Monster Squad or watch Rim of the World, which is a, a little movie on Netflix about kids during an alien invasion. And I think, I think that's one where you can suggest a lot of different movies to watch that really scratch that Stranger Things itch. I have to say, Nick, I'm super excited that I have all these recommendations from you. And I'm hoping this episode has been helpful to all of you, too. We tried to put together a diverse list of shows that you guys have probably watched. One of the best things about Netflix and all the other platforms is just the wide varieties of shows that you can watch. Shows that pop up on streaming services are much easier to get made. They're so different from cable shows. I mean, they're two different bees. You know, Nick, I would go as far to say that we're in the golden age of streaming television. Would you agree? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I truly, truly believe it. If you would have told me 10 years ago that a show like The Boys or Stranger Things were going to be extremely popular and and play such a huge role in, in the TV industry, I wouldn't believe you. As a kid, we didn't really watch a lot of television. So growing up, I really didn't watch a lot of television either. So as we get into the pandemic, that's when I'm like, okay, I guess I have to watch television. And it's just amazing when you look at the types of shows that you can watch now compared to the stuff that, well, we had to settle for, like, back in the day. They're just so, I mean, Lovecraft Country, too. Even HBO's always done stuff that's, that's always been, and they've, they've really kind of pioneered this, this left of center doing, telling these unique stories. But we, 
kind of live in a world where we're surrounded by the haunting of Bly Manor, the boys, um, uh, Stranger Things, Ozark. We're getting all these unique, fascinating pieces of content, and it's kind of opening our eyes to to what's really there, and and is opening us up to. I think so much more and, and as an audience, like recommending things to folks feels easier than ever because I think we as an audience are so open. We're open to to so much more now, which is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling pumped. It's been so great to sit down and chat with you all about the amazing TV shows out there. And even if you don't have Real Good, you can go to their website and find tons of articles. Nick, you have a lot of lists for folks. Must-watch crime shows, thrillers, comedies. It seems like you've covered nearly everything. And thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for, for listening to me, Babel. I appreciate it. Trust me, when we're chatting about shows, it's not Pavel at all. I know I'm going to plop a few shows into my Netflix queue. So what about you guys and gals? Have any of the shows we chatted about caught your attention? Are you excited now that Nick and I have told you all about the coolest shows that you should watch? Hopefully, this will help break you out of this post-series slump. We've all been there, aimlessly scrolling, but now that's a thing of the past. If you want to learn even more about new shows and streaming, check out my website, commando.com. We have so many great articles that can answer your tech questions and also help you with your streaming questions. And don't forget, you can always download my app and join the Commando community. And just a quick reminder, you can get the Kim Commando Show podcast. That's my weekly three-hour radio show as well as my daily radio show over at getkim.com. It's not available on the podcast services. You have to go over to getkim.com. You have a free 30-day trial, and after that, it's just a few bucks a month. Again, that's getkim.com. And if you do sign up, we really appreciate your support, especially now during this pandemic. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks again to Nick Floyd for hanging out with us today. And a special thanks to our producers, Mike James and Cassidy Taylor. You guys and gals do some real magic. And last but not least, I want to give a good round of applause to Serena O'Sullivan for putting this episode together. I'm America's digital pro, Kim Commando. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you're listening to this before Halloween, happy Halloween. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials.